starving. I'm starving, bro. Let's. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking oh, chicken teriyaki. I'm breakfast? thinking chicken teriyaki again. You done for that? With the Uncle Ben's Jasmine Rice. Georgia Highlands enters the 2022 spring with six elected captains. They are pitchers Connor Perry and Jacob Ryan, outfielder Connor Todaro, and catchers Ben Olson, David Smith, and Pat Walker. They are the leaders, the trendsetters, the standards for the Chargers. And in the case of longtime friends and teammates Olson and Todaro, Captains also know that, well, it's okay to have fun. Some of these will get you that just go like cranium. Oh. Yeah, Jacob DeGrom's Hunter 2 on the show. That's all you need, man. Oh, he doesn't throw a sinker. It's just four seam. It's just the four seam up. It's all the pronation, good. One more? Nice. Show him how it's done, Connor. Huh? I said show him how it's done. Nice. Check your elbow, boys. I am speed. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I broke that. It's whatever. I literally put one on because I thought you said you were wearing another long sleeve. No, no, no. You said you were wearing three shirts, and I said, yeah. <laughs> a shirt. That's all right, though. I'll be warm. I'm warmer than you. No. Yeah. I'm on the hot mic. It's automatic warmth. Olsen, a product of Kell High School, and Todaro, coming from Harrison, were teammates in the 643 DP travel program. They went to USC Upstate together as freshmen in 2019. Todaro got seven at-bats in the spring of 2020 before the shutdown, and the crunch of the depth chart and returning players led to him betting on himself and returning to Metro Atlanta and Georgia Highlands. He exploded last spring, setting Charger records for average and on-base percentage, along with hits, runs, doubles, and triples. Tadara was a GCAA Gold Glove Award winner, and was honored with all-conference and Region 17 all-tourney selections. Obviously, he's an outstanding player. I mean, he, I, in my opinion, he's the best junior college outfielder in the entire country, the best three-hole hitter in the entire country. Um, and he's just electric, man. I mean, he's one of my best friends, you know. I don't know, I like, I like electric. It, I guess it kind of means I could be a spark plug for the team, get something going whenever we're down and out, or if we are up, we could just keep it going. You know, I love doing that. I love being able to be the guy that can get somebody in with just a single hit or a double or something, or maybe steal bags or make a big play in the outfield. I just love it. Uh, Toads is phenomenal. You know, I mean, people, people have heard how good he is, but it's one of those where I think you even got to see it in person to really see the way he goes about the game is, it's, it's top notch. Well, he's really, really good. I mean, that's how good he is, you know, as far as, you know, how you play. I mean, I think he could play at any level. I, I think he's got the work ethic and the ability where it wouldn't shock me to see him on television someday. I, I think he's that kind of human being. Um, you know, because it's not just talent, you know, it's it's talent, it's character, it's, you know, understanding how to, how to behave and how to act, and, and he does all of those things well. So, you know, I think that, you know, and, and I, I don't mean this disrespectfully to anybody that sees this, but I think any, you know, Division One program that, that has not offered him yet, if they need an outfielder, they're crazy if they haven't pulled the trigger on this guy. While Olsen would find success at USC Upstate, his path to it was anything but a straight line. Outside of the game, he was dealing with tragedy. My senior year of high school, um, March of that year, my dad had passed away and that was really rough on my family and I. And, you know, I had to take on that man in the house role. And, you know, that was really tough because I was an 18 year old kid. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I got to Upstate in that fall and, you know, I, I struggled on the field just because I, yeah, I was 18 years old playing with 22, 23 year old guys, you know, and I trusted my coaches, trusted my teammates and I just took in all the knowledge that they could give me and um, I kind of just took that and ran with it, you know, I, I came home in the winter and just grinded because I knew I had a shot to play in the spring and um, got back on campus in the spring. I played every single day at Upstate, um, hit 320 and was the Big South freshman of the year. You know, that was definitely hard on him and I was always there for him. I was always there to talk to him. 
and he, he grew up so fast. He, I mean, he's a grown man now. He's always has been. He's very mature, and he, he just handles things a different way compared to everybody else just because he his mind is very hardened. COVID hit that season, shut it down early, and I didn't have baseball, you know, and my mental health really took a toll. And uh, I knew that what was best for me was to come home. And my mom, my mom lives right down the road, you know, and being there for my mom was what was most important, I think. And, uh, you know, it was really tough, but I just put all my trust in Coach O and this program, and it's made me a better player, better man, and I'm really blessed for sure. I think when things like that happen in your life, it, it gives you an opportunity to really put things where they belong. And I think he's been able to do that. And, and you know, one of the great things about him coming here was that he would have an opportunity to be close to home where, you know, he could be with his mother and he could be with his family. And I think that was really valuable for him. Um, but absolutely i think that has had a major impact on him how could it not uh, but I, I think it's a testament to who he is that um you know he, he he does the things that he does and he's also open about it with his teammates you know i mean it, you know it's not one of those things where he's like hey i don't you know uh, you know i'm going to shy away from you know th this this bad circumstance you know nobody wants to lose a parent um, you know and, and when it's weighing on him he talks about it and I think guys really respect that and respond to that because he's just so honest he hit 340 last season with an OPS over a thousand for the Chargers going deep nine times with 10 doubles three triples and 34 RBI and he goes into the spring knowing his baseball future is secure in November Olsen signed his letter of intent to attend Mercer it's awesome. I'm excited. I really am excited. But winning here is what is first and most important for sure. Splitting time with Olsen behind the plate is the catcher who has become one of GCAA's top RBI machines in David Smith. While Olsen is the more outspoken of the tandem, Smith takes on a different style in setting the tone for the Chargers. David is... is uh... He's really unique, you know, because he's he doesn't talk unless he needs to. But his baseball IQ is so high, and he always knows what everybody on the field is supposed to be doing. And he always knows where everybody's supposed to be. And so, you know, I think, again, it's, it's different. You know, we've got guys like Ben where, you know, Ben is vocal, and he's going to speak up, and he's, he's got things to say throughout the game. And David is going to quietly go about his business and, and do his thing but you know when he has something to say you know I think it has a big impact because he's not going to come up to you and say something to you just for you know just to be talking he, he's going to come up and tell you what you need to know and I probably trust David as much or more than I've ever trusted a player I've had in terms of asking his opinion about what's going on on the field. You know, I mean, he has a huge say in what we're going to do with our pitching staff and decisions that we're going to make because I, I know that he really understands what they're doing and what's going on out there. Smith went deep 11 times last season and led the conference in RBI with 62, which was also a program record. It all led him being named to the all-conference team. He was also a Region 17 all-tournament selection. Oh, good old Dave. He has bombs. I mean, he's a beast. Uh, just a, a dangerous hitter in the box and can drive it to all parts of the field. You know, he absolutely rakes and he'll lead the t every single team he plays on in RBIs every single year. Not to be outdone with his offense, Smith also earned a GCAA gold glove for his work behind the plate as he threw out 31.8% of runners with a 992 fielding percentage. He's one of the best catchers I've ever thrown to. Blocks the ball well, throws the ball well, does everything. Hits the ball really good as well. David, he's more, he's a lot more calmer. He's soft-spoken, but he talks with his play more than anything in his presence. You can just feel it whenever he's throwing the ball down to second before I throw my first pitch. Like you can just feel that you got a guy across from you that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in the country. And David, he's one of them. He's got power like I've never seen before and he, he's a special player for sure. Smith's feel for the game can't be underscored enough. He's been calling games since he first took the field for the Chargers in 2020, leading to a 2-4-0 ERA and five shutouts as a redshirt freshman. And in 2021, he was behind the plate for the first no-hitter by a single pitcher in Georgia Highlands history.
Coach O's allowed me to do it ever since I got here, but I think it was allowing him to trust me throughout inter squads in the fall that I understood how to do it and just kind of growing up that's at a younger age I always called the game so it's just a good I like doing it because you can trust the pitchers they can trust you and you can just build off that relationship that was it right there I'm gonna end on that one actually no we'll put the cherry on top Finish another good one. Ooh. I'll take it. The very definition of intensity on the Georgia Highlands roster is Connor Perry. It's in his preparation and it's in the way he conducts himself on the mound. He's probably one of the most intense guys like on the mound I've ever seen play. Uh, I mean, he gets after everything he does, no matter if it's pitching, just regular toss, doing his after throwing work, like anything like that is just super intense for him. Uh, Connor Perry's aggressive. You know, he was a wrestling and football guy in high school too, so uh, he takes all of that from his past and really pours it out when he's out on the ball part, out on the ball field, and um, that's that's why he's so successful. It's just the intent and what he does is, it's really good. Perry is. He's more the aggressor mentality on the on the mound, something that a lot of guys, a lot of defenders want to get behind. You know, it's fun to watch him pitch. You know, he throws really hard, throws a lot of strikes, gets a lot of outs, and it's, I love catching it. It's fun to catch. It's awesome. In all GCAA selection in 2021, Perry set new Chargers records for strikeouts with 76 and wins with nine. But for all the success he found on the mound, the way the season ended was tough for Perry to stomach. He lasted two innings in Georgia Highlands' loss to Andrew College in the Region 17 championship game, allowing four runs, all earned, on two hits with four walks among the 12 batters he faced. The frustrations of that outing had fueled both Perry's mentality and his approach to the 2022 season. That was one of the things that has really propelled the evolution in my mindset. It's just like. That game, going back and thinking about it, my mind was just moving in so many different places. It wasn't focused on the catcher's mitt, it was focused on everything but that. And it was, I would lose a pitch here or there and I would get so flustered and before I knew it, I would be behind in the counts, they would be getting fastballs, just cookie cutter over the plate because I'm having to throw strikes. And that's really what has forced me to where I'm just relaxed and calm, not letting the moments get too big because at the end of the game, at the end of the day, we're playing a kid's game that I've played since I was five years old. Last year, I learned a lot in that championship game. Whenever my mind was racing, I couldn't find that center and I've been able to find that center this year in terms of like being centered, calm, attacking the zone, focused on my target, and that loss is only going to fuel this team even more, and I know everybody's got a chip on their shoulder because of it, and I know I have, and I'm very obsessive when it comes to those types of things, so I'm very excited to see what the season holds. He understands what it takes to be a leader. You know, he wants to be, he wants to be the best. Um, there's a reason why he was, you know, first team all conference last year, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that he has a little bit of um, giddy up to him this year. Um, you know, he, he, the way the tournament ended last year, you know, it hit him a little bit harder because he was a guy on the mound, uh, which is always good. You know, he learned a lot about himself. He's constantly communicating with me, um, and the most important thing about him is his work ethic is just second to none. I mean, it is incredible, and uh, that's part of his leadership role. He's not a too, he's not too big of a talker, uh, but he tries to lead by example. Well, number one, he's a competitor, you know, and, and I think that's the key for anybody that's going to be successful in in a sport, right? You, you ultimately, you got to be a competitor, and I think he's an elite competitor. Uh, but I think he puts in the work. Um, you know, his velocity has jumped consistently since he's been here. He works really hard on his secondary pitches, and, and he's not afraid to fail. So when he goes out there, if he's been developing, you know, or working on one of his pitches, he's going to go use it, and he's not afraid, like, maybe this pitch isn't going to work or maybe it's going to get hit you know I, I think he's okay with the results because I think he's comfortable with the with the work that he's putting into it so um, you know but I mean it, he's really effective I mean he's a guy that's coming at you with a little bit of a quirky movement you know and then he's got four pitches he's throwing at you and they're all pretty good and they all move like crazy. Allow Perry to take us inside his arsenal which he says is led by his fastball while he continues to work on fine-tuning his changeup. Four seam grip. I used to only throw two seams, 
and I would grip like a sinker type, two seam, no seam, whatever you want to call it. And I used to throw that all the time. And this year I'm actually changed to where I throw four seams now. I've always gotten arm side movement on my fastballs naturally. This tails a lot less than this does, but I still do get some arm side here with the four seam. And this mainly just because I want to be able to get a up and in tunnel with this four seam and then run my change up off of it look about like that it's like a circle change and I try to put a little bit of pressure on my middle finger too so that way it pulls down on that seam when I'm coming through it and my slider grip um, right now it's literally just I grip my fastball my four seam and I just slide over on the seam just a little bit and throw it just like a fastball and then my knuckle curve is literally in the same grip position I just slide over to my slider and then I just grip a knuckle curve there and I just make sure I keep my hand on top of it and don't drop my arm or get on the side of it because then it'll get like slurvy and crappy. Opposite Perry is the Chargers pitching captain is Jacob Ryan, who last season made 10 starts, striking out 7.4 batters per nine innings. It's the consistency and his ability to fill the strike zone and even keel demeanor that stand as Ryan's biggest attributes. Jacob's more uh, crafty, you know, he He's the guy you want to call on when, you know, you need that last out. And he is, he always gets the job done, always fills the zone up, always throws a lot of strikes. Uh, Jacob, he's just a guy that is going to go out there and throw strikes and just be consistent. Like Jacob, he's not a guy where um, he's like super flashy. He's got like um, crazy fastball velocity or anything like that. He's going to be slow and steady, just fastballs and sliders in the strike zone, fill it up consistently. And every single week, whenever JR is out there, he's just a gamer and everybody knows that whenever he's on the mound, we're getting the best version of JR. Jacob is probably the most just relaxed and under controlled guy that we've got on the staff so I think he's always in control of what he's thinking I think he's always in control of what he's doing he is a really reliable strike thrower um, and and has a lot of confidence that he can throw any pitch whenever he wants he's very cool and relaxed when he gets out there and you know he just does his job you know I know for a fact every time he gets on the field that he's gonna be in the zone He's going to do everything he can to put us in a good spot to win and let our bats take over for keeping us close. The Chargers won Ryan's first four starts in 2021 and five of his first seven outings. But his season didn't end with quite the same momentum as he posted an 8-1-4 ERA over five starts in April and May. Um, he has unbelievable stuff. Um, he's a guy that kind of dinged up a little bit last year at the end of the season, so it didn't quite end the way he wanted it to. Um, but, you know, he's a guy that the, the guys that look up to, and um, he's going to have a big time in your force. Here's the Force Size Central product taking us inside his pitch grips. I throw a four seam fastball. I kind of just tuck my thumb on the back and try to rip it down as far as I can, get that spin. Uh, I don't really throw a curveball much, but when I do, I just hook it around the horseshoe and then slider. I just back it up to the other side and try not to get around it or on top of it as much and stay on the side of it. And then um, just a circle change, my last pitch. I don't throw it often, kind of struggle keeping it in the zone, but when it works, it works. Pat Walker had just one at bat last season. And with catchers Ben Olsen and David Smith ahead of him, there's no easy path to consistent playing time. But it's not the on-field production that led Walker's teammates, naming him one of the Chargers captains. He's pretty much the heart and soul of the team. He shows up every day going to work. He's got a smile on his face. He always has the best attitude, even if it's stuff that no one else wants to do. So we can kind of just feed off him. I mean, he's just the ultimate team player. He does anything for any of us. Comes to the field with a smile on his face, leaves with a smile on his face. Uh, I mean, you just can't ask for a better teammate than Pat. He's the best teammate I've ever had on any team I've ever played on for as long as I've been playing. Um, he just comes out to practice and he just wants to get better each and every day. It doesn't matter how much he plays and everyone, everyone sees that and everyone likes to be a part of that and everyone likes to, you know, follow that and it's awesome to watch. Pat's always there. He's there every single day. I mean, he he doesn't come to the ballpark knowing, like, hey, I got two catchers in front of me. He thinks of it like I'm coming to get better. I'm coming to better my teammates. You know, he's just 
he's just a great guy. Uh, it means a lot. It, it really does because, um, you know, come out every day just like everybody and really try to do my best and, and work hard and give everything I have. So it, it means a lot for people to think that of me. Walker's worth to this team is within the relationships in both the present and future tense. Winning's important, putting up numbers, all that stuff, but that's not really what it's about. It's it's about the shared experience and the relationship that you have with your players. And 20 years from now, you know, nobody's going to be able to tell, you know, tell you who had 15 doubles or 10 homers or you know, what their batting averages were. I mean, they're not going to remember those things. They're going to remember how they made each other feel. Whenever five, ten years from now, whenever people are getting married and everybody's having kids, like this is a guy that like you would text or give a call to, you know, like how are you doing, heard everything, or heard the kid came out okay, or heard you're getting married, man, that's awesome. Like these are guys, that, he's a guy that would be at my wedding one day. With the leadership group of Olsen, Perry, Ryan, Smith, Todaro, and Walker at Georgia Highlands Core, the intent and the focus are clear. Everybody's got the same picture in mind to win a championship and to hold that charger standard that we're trying to set out for the future programs after us. And basically, we're just trying to be the blueprint and everybody's coming here wants to be a part of it.